All right, today, guys, we're going to do our normal routine, but we're going to take the entire routine and turn it dynamic. Just because I want everybody, because tonight we're going to, we're getting to our third week right now, and I'm going to start going really, really hard, and I want everybody to be up to snuff. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go through all of the, not even the, the easy stuff, that's, that's uh, easy base to touch. So for this half hour, <clears throat> 45 minutes, I'm going to be going over all of the tough moves and the um, new add-on move. I believe that is the step up. So I'm going to be dimming it on a super high tap up, <clears throat> which is even going to be better for the for the uh, for the dynamicness of it because my my low stool is on the on the uh, is sitting on this right now. So the only thing I have left is my four footer. So I'm going to be showing you the four footer today. I'm going to be going over the push up in great detail for modifying the push up in three different ways so that everybody that has been doing this for the last three weeks can now start to do the push up and do it successfully and not burn themselves out while doing it. So I highly recommend that you do just the straight eight. And I'm gonna show you how to do those in three different modifications. And then we're gonna go over the step up and what else is a difficult move. Um, the alternating lunge, we're gonna address that as well. Um, the static lunge is really easy. Alternating lunge, I'm just looking for you guys to put that pressure down on the front foot and then pushing that foot pressure on the back leg. So those are the three things I'm going to be addressing today. All right, guys. So let's get into it. So first and foremost, I'm going to go over everything, but I'm just going to touch on it. So the standing jumping and standing jack, very simple. We don't need to touch on it too much. It's just after you get warm, after you've done a few of the standing jack, like the second and third set, try to get that foot out, keep it pointing toward the front and try to bring that foot out, not in front of you, but try to bring it out straight out from the hip, all right? So you may even wanna practice some of that with the balance too and not make it a martial art kick because a martial art kick is when you lean the body over and you do this. We wanna stay upright as much as possible, more like a ballerina, okay? So think more ballet as opposed to martial art because if you start doing this when you alternate, you're gonna throw yourself off balance and you're gonna to try to fight for balance when you're coming back up this way. And there's just gonna be a whole balance challenge and you're not gonna be getting your leg up and down in control, all right? So let's just take that out of the equation as far as the martial art kick. Let's try to stay upright as much as possible and bring that leg upright. See how my body is leaning, of course, because I have to tilt a little bit, but I'm trying to keep my body as straight as, as possible, all right? So that's the fight. Plus it strengthens the back a lot. Trust me, I've been having a lot of, uh, back needing to stretch that back out because i've been strengthening it so much and that's a big factor too when we start strengthening that back all right so that was the easy one standing lunge front and back what i call a static lunge it is called a static that's the actual name of it because it's static you're not moving anywhere right you're steady you're moving you're, you're here all right so static lunge is very easy all i want you guys you don't have to lean forward just as long as that weight is in this heel all right, you want that weight in that front heel. Look where the hamstring is. Understand the muscle that you're activating. So if I'm here with this foot on the ball, back foot on the ball, and I'm driving down with this, with this heel here, I'm dri driving down right there, I'm activating nothing but my hamstring and glute. All right, that's nothing but that. Now, when we get to the back lunge, it looks very similar, but now I'm bringing this back leg back and I'm kicking it back, I'm kicking it back, I'm kicking it back. The front leg is in the same position and I'm just bringing this one, kicking it back. So that's the difference between the front and the back lunge, guys. All right, especially static. It's the same application applies when we're doing the alternating lunge. You just have to be a little more precise because look what's happening. As you're doing the alternating lunge, you're coming in and out of that move so quickly that the precision needs to be very, very executed, very, very good. So as you come down, boom, right? That heel, that weight is all in that heel. My quad and hamstring are both activated. That back leg is not kicking out. I push off with the front leg, no activation in the back. I come back down with the alternating leg, come down. See that leg is not doing anything. And I push back, it does not kick out, all right? Pressure there. Step back, no kick out on the back leg. Now, when I'm doing the alternating back lunge, there is a kick out. Now watch the difference. Back leg is activating now. 
right? So back leg comes here all the way down and I float the front leg so that the back leg gets all that pressure coming back. I float the back leg. Unlike when I'm doing the front one, I step it back immediately. This one, I push it off, I float it back. Deep in the lunge so the back leg activates and I push off and I float it back. Okay, that's the difference between the two lunges. Now, if, it, if it's too much pressure on your patella, which is your knee, when you're floating that leg back, because it does put a lot of pressure there, that's our tensile workout. That's all those tiny ligaments and tendons that go along the side of the patella, okay? That when we, when we twist our knee or we do anything, that's because those ligaments or tendons are weak. Now, I understand that that is a lot of pressure coming back at this point. I understand that, all right? So for those of you that's doing this one, you push back and step forward. I will allow that. That's your modification for that. I will allow that modification, okay? However, by, by stepping forward and not stepping back, that, work, that front lunge workout that you just did, alternating front lunge, that leg is now not getting any rest, okay? So understand that when you decide to take that route and step forward as opposed to stepping back, that leg is not getting any rest, all right? Because now you're putting that pressure right back on it. When you're stepping back, of course, it's the alternating leg, but it's a different part of the muscle. It's the quad, not the hamstring, all right? And that calf is taking a lot of it too, which the calf is not getting any activation when you're stepping forward. There's no activation here for the calf. Nothing, that calf is not activated at all. It's stabilizing, but it's not activated, okay? So when we're doing that alternating lunge, please remember to kick that back leg out when we're doing the static one, because you're not gonna get it as much when you're doing the alternating lunge. The front alternating lunge, you're gonna get everything you're looking for. The back alternating lunge, a lot of people don't want that pressure on the knee. And you'll even see me after doing like the third and fourth set, which is like 60 to 100 lunges, you gotta figure we do 16 per set, 16, 16 that's 32, and we do three to four sets. 32 times three, 32 times four. So you start getting up there on just an alternating lunge without the static lunge and then without the squat. So those knees start to play a little bit of a price. All right, that's why I always talk about the glucosamine, your conjointant, your fish oil, things like that to keep the body naturally lubricated. All right, guys? Now, I'm gonna go over here and grab my step up and then we're gonna get into the push up. Now, when we do this tonight, because I'm gonna be going hard, this is why I'm giving you guys a heads up and giving you a break today with this class because I'm, I'm serious. I want the paint. I want you to go to the paint. That's what it means. I want you to go to the paint with me tonight. So the step up is a tap up. It's just you alternating tapping. And I might even go because it's not a step up, it's just a tap. So I might even go high tonight just because it's a tap. And then when we do the actual step up, I'll go back down. All right. So just for the tap up and understand it's just tapping. And it is, it is advantageous for you guys to, it, it would be, you know, better for you guys to go a little bit higher than what you would normally tap on, like a step or something like that, or a stool at least, okay? We want it to be higher than an actual step. And a step is just about, I'm looking at my step right here going into my house. It's about maybe 12 inches or less, maybe nine inches. So you want something that's at least two feet, double it, all right? Not quite double, but at least two feet. All right, so now <clears throat> we're just gonna come up. We're gonna tap the entire ball of the foot, the entire ball of the foot here, right? That whole surface comes on and taps. Only thing that's hanging off is just the heel. All right, I don't want your tippy toe Michael Jackson. Hee <laughs> hee. Michael Jackson toe is right there where your foot is down here. It's not on top of the platform. It's at the side of the platform. I'm not looking for that. I want you to put on top of the platform, tap on the top of the platform, shifting. Now, also, be aware of how much your body sways back and forth when you're doing this. If your body is swaying like this, and that's all we got for now, that's okay. We'll clean it up eventually. We'll get it cleaned up. Now, if, the, if it's, this is when you know it's too high. If your leg has to come out to the side of it, it's too high. Your leg should be able to come up in front of it. You're standing right behind it. You should be able to lift straight up, boom, boom. All right, the entire foot or the ball of the foot at least coming onto the platform. 
All right, tap it, tap, 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 tap. As you progress, you notice that my body doesn't sway a lot. I ran track for almost 20 years, high level track. So I'm super used to my body not swaying. That's losing energy and slows me down. Coaches told you forever to not sway your body. So as you progress, plus it locks in your core. People fail to realize that a sprinter and a runner has so, so, so much core. It's, you guys would be amazed on how much core we have because of stabilizing so much, keeping that body straight, just like that, almost no movement. So as you progress, I want you to not use your energy, lose energy, I mean, and just step that leg straight up. Plus, it's more work for that abductor and that hip flexor. Now we're doing core right now. All right, so that's your step up for tonight. Now, let's get to the most challenging one for most people. Men, women, children, pets. <laughs> My dog uh, does a pretty good push-up though, I ain't gonna lie. My big boy, he does a pretty decent push-up. All right, so we have hand position, we have three different hand positions, and feet position, we have three different feet positions. Now. Those variations are gonna make a large, large difference on how many push-ups you can do. All right, a lot of people probably don't address this. I honestly, God, I consider myself one of the push-up kings for the simple fact that I've won push-up competitions. I know a great deal about a push-up. So, and what they can do for you. So, with that being said, we have a wide stance, which is gonna be probably the easiest for most people for the simple fact it activates more muscle. You have your pectoralis major, your pectoralis minor, your delt, your lat, your tricep, and the uh, back part of your shoulder, all helping you with a wide stance push-up. So I'm gonna show you that what that is. Wide stance push-up is gonna be anything that is slightly outside of your shoulder. Now, for people that wanna do a modified push-up, please, forever and a day, today, tomorrow, and yesteryear, Please never, I don't care what anybody has ever showed you, listen to me on this one and do not dictate because you will, it takes three pounds of pressure on your patella in order to hurt it or render it. Same thing as your, your solar plex. Three pounds of pressure to crack your solar plex. So be careful of those, those things. It's just a little bit of wor uh, words to grow. All right. So if you ever like accidentally fall on your chest, it's pretty easy to hurt yourself. All right. Only three pounds of pressure. That's why we always want that. Men want that the pectoralis to cover that up because you know that's a big issue now same thing with your knee rotating on you i'm not even going to demo it guys i'm not even going to demo it because i don't want to hurt myself seriously it's that serious because my, your body is so significantly heavier than three pounds for you to rotate on your knee is just absolutely bad math so i've seen the push-up where the feet are crossed and the legs come off of the ground and then every time they come down they rotate on the knee like i said i'm not even going to demo it I'll be just the one that gets hurt, okay? <clears throat> Never, ever, 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 ever in any instance, rotate on your knee. If you can avoid it, never in life. I'm, I'm very, very serious right here. Now, when you're on the back, that's the patella. My patella right now is up off of the ground. I'm on my actual knee, not my kneecap, the actual knee right here, okay? So I can put a lot of pressure on that. You know, that's when people fall to their knees and things like that. You see people fall on stage and things like that and fall to their knees. They're not falling on their, they're falling on the, uh, the very bottom of the knee, which can hold an enormous amount of pressure, all right? Can get beat up a whole lot. Now, when you do a push-up, you rotate so that you're not gonna be able to stay back there. So what I want you guys to do is, to, which the first thing you're gonna do is, if you're gonna do, especially when we get to the burpee, you're gonna have to modify the burpee, obviously. But if you wanna accomplish the push-up, you're gonna bring your pelvis forward. Right, your ball of your feet are under you. Not gonna lift your knee. Your pelvis is forward. Now you're lifting your entire upper body. Your feet are about shoulders width apart, if not closer. Okay, and your hands are wider than your shoulder. Your pelvis is completely tucked in. You're up and down right here. Safe. All right. No pressure on your meniscus. I mean, on your patella. I'm sorry. Now, for those of you that want to do a push-up with your knees up, I'm gonna give you three successful ways to accomplish that, even if you're not very used to push-ups. You're always gonna start with the wide stance. That's the easiest. If you bring your feet wide, you have a wide stance. You're in an X form, right? If your feet are wide here, and you're doing your push-up wide, wide, 
the easiest push-up you can do with knees up. As you start to come in, bringing any extremity in, arms or legs in, the push-up gets more challenging. So next one would be shoulders width apart, right? And then you're gonna bring your feet shoulders width apart. So your body is lined up again, right? Elbows go tucked in, they don't flare out. All right? Most difficult, which I hold for those that have quite a bit of push-up experience. The diamond, which everybody wants to say they can do, but then when you get to doing it, they are tough. They are tough because it's almost all isolated tricep and um, shoulder, all right? So you're driving through, if you want to develop those triceps, this is the tricep developer right here. This is absolutely my favorite. Diamond. And on a diamond, your hands don't necessarily need to touch, but that's the traditional diamond. And then on the true diamond, your feet are crossed. One foot is over the other, whichever one you choose. Just like that. And you're coming on down. Not only are you doing a difficult push-up that isolates pretty much the, the tricep muscle, and the core, now you're playing a balance game as well. Because that foot is up on one and that foot, other foot is dangling over, you're fighting to keep your body straight. So it's a lot more core involved when you're doing a diamond or you can even do any push-up that you choose and cross your feet. Even when I'm doing wide stance, I always cross my legs or have my feet together so that I'm always playing the core game when I'm doing that, when I'm doing those uh, push-ups, all right? Even when you're doing a burpee and you're coming down and popping down, up and down that quick half a second, you know, that it, it can make all the difference. Now, getting to that, I said I was gonna address three, I might as well address four, the burpee. I know a lot of us, a lot of my clients, and, and I would say probably more than 50% of my clients, private clients, have carpal tunnel issues, all right? So hopping down is absolutely a no-go. So what do I do with that? They absolutely do burpees. What I have them do is they have blocks in their hands, the yoga blocks in their hands. So when we get to, you can pretty much do this workout with yoga blocks in your hands the entire time because there's no weights involved. So you can have your two yoga ball, uh, blocks in your hands, which probably weigh about anywhere from two to three ounces each in each hand. So it literally would be about the weight of your hand or you wouldn't even probably feel it. It's not gonna even make a difference. You could do the whole entire workout and for any posture that you wanna come down into, you can use the blocks to just support you. And you know, the blocks are this way and that way. So on some of those postures, you can fold them the long way, right? So if you're doing a tap, and you don't really need that much posture because it's narrow and you just want that support really quick, you know, it's a mental thing possibly, and you just want to tap it, boom, you can use it for that. Now, if you're using an actual support, I would suggest that you turn it the um, not upright, turn it the long way. Now it's a wider base, it's closer to the ground, and it's a lot more sturdy. Now, if you're gonna go full weight, I suggest that you lay it down, which is still gonna be about anywhere from four to six inches off the ground. And then you can bear your entire weight on it, put your hands flat on it and use it completely, all right? So if you're doing your push-ups, I would suggest that you put them down on the ground and just keep placing your hands in that same position to do your push-up, all right? So for your blocks, those are some modifications uh, right there. Now, for stepping into the actual uh, burpee, aside from using your blocks to step down to save your wrists, because not only are you saving your wrists, because this pressure right here is what, what, what is an issue for a lot of, if your hands are in this position here, this doesn't tend to bother us as much, okay? So now stepping actually in and placing your hands down on the ground if you're not using the block, or even if you are using the block, stepping out. I honestly believe that the second modification, you got the super modified and the modified. I honestly believe that the modified is probably the easiest. Super modified is kind of like a camel walk because you have to walk out. I know everybody wants to take a smaller step, but this right here is tough. It's more of a stretch. If you can come down with your blocks or without, and you're in this position, you just tripod your hands and you take that one big step out. Now, yeah, it's a stretch, but all the pressure's off. And then right before you start to sink down, just take that other big step, drop that pelvis just a little bit, just into push-up position, and step that leg right back in. And as you're stepping in, your pelvis is already coming up, your waist is already coming up, so you're already halfway up. All right, don't worry about the jump right now because we're doing low to no. If you want to, if you want to start to step it up a little bit, give me a high knee with a, with a hands up. And then every time alternate to the other leg. So when you do your second burpee, you'll do the other leg, all right? 
as opposed to a gel. Okay, so just some mods that's going to help you guys out a great deal with uh, especially tonight's class is going to be pretty explosive. So let's go over everything one time in its entirety dynamically and I'm going to show you I'm going to even pull in the, the stepper. I'm only going to go address the, the things that we talked about. I'm not going to do the entire workout. We're going to do only the hard things. All right. Nah, well, you know what? I said entirety, didn't I? But then I said only the hard thing. So we're going to go with my first set words and we'll do one round. I'm going to address everything. So here, as we go in, again, try to remember to keep that foot forward right here and try to remember to try to come out straight from the hip. Be very conscious of when you're doing these to not bring that foot forward. This is the easy part. We want some, we want, we're looking for resistance. We're looking for results. Remember, I told you I want results by July 1st. Everybody to have a big change. I want you to do your measurement now. I can't measure everybody. We could do a big measurement as a group, maybe tonight or something. But what I'm looking for is that foot being straight out, right? And you not shifting your weight too much as you go through it. Not giving me karate, martial art kicks, all right? Giving me ballet kicks, right? Keeping that leg in control, in control. All right, now, static lunge, front lunge. Weight on that front leg. And I want you to see the difference. See how that back leg is not kicking out? It's just right there. It's not kicking out at all. Keep it softly bent. Step back. Boom. Keep that leg, back leg softly bent. That front leg is doing all the work. Step back. Walk up, back leg does the work now. We take that big step back, back leg is kicking back, kicking back. This one is resting. He's supporting kicking back and kicking back. Other side, kicking back, kicking back, kicking back. And the only way you're gonna get a true kickback is if you're dropping that leg a little bit deeper, all right? You got to drop that leg a little bit deeper in order to get that kick back. You're not going to get it if you have that leg shallow. So if you just have the leg here, you're not going to get anything. That leg has to come down in order for it to kick back. All right. Now that's the work. That's the work of it. I will even say if it starts to get too trying by your second and third, only by your second and third set, then go ahead and you can grab your stool which I need right now anyway, right? So you got your stool here and you're doing those and they're starting to get trying. You got your stool. I will allow it. All right, guys. Now, alternating is a little bit trickier. You just gotta be really conscious of it that's why it's important that that back leg pays when we're doing the static. Because when you're doing the front lunge alternating, you're gonna get everything you're looking for. That leg is gonna pay. All that pressure is gonna come down. This is the low impact because your foot is only coming off the ground about maybe two to three inches as it travels. And then there's that impact of as it plants, right? You get everything that you're looking for on the front. Now, when it comes to doing the back, I'm going, that was the two front. Now I'm gonna do the back. As I do the back and I step back, the step up shifts weight here. So that's why that step back has to be really true. Kick it back and step in. Do you see how it shortcuts itself because it's alternating? It becomes almost all quad, right? It becomes almost all quad. So me personally, I don't even try to bring the kick out into it. I let the quad part just kick in because I need the quad work as well. Plus that's the great way to get your tensile strength. Safest way too, because when you're doing the impact, this one is almost, I would say no, no impact. Because look at where you're going. Your foot slides back, it glides. That's like taking a step or even less than a step because it's a supported step, all right? So go down, go on down and get that when you're, when you're doing that um, back lunge and get that tensile strength right off of that patella so we can get that strength going. 
<clears throat> we're gonna strengthen it even more when we get to advanced. For those of you that did dance with me before, we were working just specifically on tensor strength. All right. Now, our step up. Remember what I said about keeping that body as straight as you can and not trying to deviate and go left to right and swing that body. Even from the start, try to put in that muscle memory that the body needs to stay ergonomic. It needs to stay as straight as you can as you bring that leg straight up, right? And move those hands. This is a, is a major, because this is your tail rudder, all right? Move that hand with you. It's gonna help you significantly. Don't put your hands here and try to keep them stationary. You're gonna sway left to right. This is keeping you balanced, like a, like a cheetah using his tail when he turns really, really sharp. That's a rudder. He needs that. And you need this too. You need that back hand to keep you balanced when you tap up just like that. You need that counterbalance. All right? So swing those arms. Plus that keeps that heart rate up. As we said in track, thumb in your eye. So your hand should be, just, don't put your thumb in your eye, obviously. <laughs> but your thumb, if you're running here, your thumb should be about high, um, eyes height. Every time. Thumb in the eye. All right. Now, last but not least, let's get into our push-up and our burpee. I'm going to do them all at one time. I'm going to do three of them so that we can see the three difference when we go into the feet stance wide. I'm going to do wide, feet wide. I'm going to do feet at shoulder length, and I'm going to do feet, and I'm going to do all of those. I'm going to do one um, super. I mean, no, one modified. No super modified. Only modified standard which is the pop out and um uh advanced all right so modified oh let me do that let me do push-ups let me do that again because i want to show you the, the knees down so how you can show how fast it can actually work so modified That's how fast it can be, guys. All right, just that smooth. All right. Um, now we're going to do uh, modified. Hands go inside. Hands come inside on this one. All right. Hands don't go outside on this one. Hands go inside. You'll hurt your you'll hurt your chest and you'll hurt your elbows if you try to keep your hands outside. Bring those hands inside, about right lined up with your um, feet, and those feet pop out. Hands are going to stay right where they are. Push up. And then hop right back in. That's my absolute favorite. I love the stretch on the back on that hop. This is awesome. Now, last but not least is the modified. And I'm going to do it with the uh, arms up. All right? So for those of us that don't want to just jump just yet, but we still want that intensity, here we go. Inside. Pop out, push up, pop in, stand, step. All right. That's what we're looking for for our um, modifieds. All right, guys. Now, not so much that we did a killer workout, but I still want to keep you guys crazy flexible. So, what I want today is those feet wide, right? Just about not too much of a plie because when you're getting too much of a plie, you're putting pressure on your knee. And we're not ballerinas and we don't, we don't exercise that muscle like that. They do. So we're going to use half of their, their workout. And come on down. Notice that my knees are bent and my glute is in the air. All right? And I'm just stretching right here. Yeah, you feel that? I know you do. And five, four, three, two softly bend coming down supporting yourself with your hands and if you can't get down past 90 oh. and this is where your feet being plie can hinder you so what you want to do is if they're too far plie turn them in and honestly one foot is going to have more flexibility than the other and as you can see that is the left foot that right foot is kicked out and i can feel that a lot more significantly in my back uh, and my elbows are inside of my knees. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my feet where they are because I want to open up my hips right now to take all that pressure off of my lower back. 
going to bring my hands together in prayer. And from here, I'm going to push my knees out, opening my hips, keeping my feet stationary for 10, ouch, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Put my hands down. If I can, walk them forward. And coming up onto the ball of my foot. And now I'm going to walk my hands out. And then once they're out, I'm going to push and oh, up at my just below my knee. Oh, yeah. Opening those hips completely now. That pressure just kind of on my lower back just kind of disintegrated. This way you're holding and supporting yourself completely. I know I'm looking like I'm doing some advanced move. I'm really, really not. This is super duper easy and simple. If you guys just gracefully came into this move with me, it, it, it's not hard at all. I am literally have my weight of my legs um, on my elbows, on my, my uh, triceps, and uh, just kind of leaning forward and all, pushing down all the pressure just on the, on the ball of my hand. That's about it. My wrist people are, are doing this when we're with me right now. I would suggest that you have your yoga blocks and then have them turned either sideways or completely down. I'm gonna come back, plant those heels back down. See how my feet plie because of that position. I'm gonna straighten the feet out, come up, and then turn up on the heel. And then I'm gonna bring both of those in. Ooh, I got those uh I got those feet closer together, so those elbows are gonna push those legs up even further. <sighs> For 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Oh, last time forward. Bring them out. Oh, on the ball of foot. <sighs> and 10. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I got to get to what you call it. Anyway. All right, guys. Straighten those legs up. Uh, come up slow. Stop right at mid. Keeping those hands either on the feet, the ground, or at the ankle, or even at the shin. And holding for 10. That back is round. Nine, eight, seven, six. Four, three, bury the chin into the chest, come up slowly, vertebrae by vertebrae. Oh. All right, guys, hydrate. Stay pumped for today. Eat well because tonight is going to be what? All right, thanks a lot. See you guys later.